on, let's talk about the axillary artery. Now, what is the axillary artery? The axillary artery is the major content of the axillary space. So, what happens is, if you remember the boundaries of the axilla, this was the clavicle. Posteriorly, the apex had the superior border of scapula and medially it had the first rib. This is the first rib, this is the superior border of scapula, this is the clavicle. This is basically the apex of the axilla or the part where you can enter the axilla. So an artery that comes from the heart exits the thorax and is about to enter the axilla and on the outer border of the first rib which is the important landmark as I say to my students, just before it enters the axilla, it has a huge memory loss. It forgets its name. And when it realizes that it is inside the axilla, it changes its name into the axillary artery. In more complex terms, the axillary artery is the continuation of subclavian artery and it begins at the outer border of the first rib. The axillary artery then encounters a muscle, a very important muscle called the pectoralis minor muscle. This is a muscle that arises from the third, fourth and fifth ribs and gets inserted into the coracoid process of the scapula. When the axillary artery is in the axillary canal, it is faced by this important muscle. The point of this muscle is that it divides the axillary artery into three parts. Never forget this muscle as it divides the axillary artery into first, second, and third parts. The first part lies superiorly or it lies proximal to the pectoralis minor muscle. The second part lies deep or just posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle. And the third part lies inferior or distal to the pectoralis minor muscle. This is of anatomical importance as each part gives off a different branch that we will study later. Mm. And finally, the axillary artery, again, it loses its memory when it comes across a muscle called the teres major. If you remember, we studied this in the scapula. At the lower border of the teres major, the axillary artery again faces memory loss and changes its name to the brachial artery. So now you know the pathway and basic divisions of the axillary artery. So in more complex terms, the axillary artery is a continuation of subclavian artery right outside the border of the first rib. It continues until the lower border of teres major where it becomes the brachial artery of the arm. And during its stay in the axilla, it is divided into three parts by the pectoralis minor muscle. First part lying superiorly, second part lying deep, and third part inferior to this muscle. Similar to the artery, another content of the axilla is the axillary vein. The axillary vein, however, since arteries carry blood away from the heart, veins carry it towards the heart. So the axillary vein is basically first the basilic vein of the arm, B-A-S-I-L-I-C, basilic vein of the arm. When it reaches the lower border of teres major, it loses its memory yet again and becomes the axillary vein. It's almost the same pathway uh, simultaneous with the axillary artery. It basically goes and at the outer border of the first rib, the axillary vein becomes, continues as the subclavian vein, which finally goes to the heart.